Thank you for joining me for another episode of Mixed Media Monday. I'm Eric Scott, and I'm here to share some simple ideas of how you can do mixed media, uh, create interesting layers, and create some interesting art. So um, yeah, so this week I thought I'd go ahead and work with something a little bit different, some of the same materials, but then some uh, something slightly different before I used a uh, tape transfer. I think today I'm gonna rely more on some magazine collage. So, uh, but all the other materials are, are kind of the same and you can check out the list of my materials there in the description of the video. So um, anyway, let's go ahead and dive into today and see where we go. All right, so I've got my same, that, that same kind of size paper, same kind of paper. It's a mixed media paper, it's nice and heavy. It does curl a little bit, but that's all right. Um, so last time I started off with the, the paint, I think today I wanna to start off with something a little bit different. So I'm gonna just grab a, a pencil, a drawing pencil or just a regular graphite pencil. And uh, I don't always start with paint. And I think just today I'm gonna to draw some kind of random kind of map-like lines. I did very similar lines before. I just, I really like maps and even just drawing and, and creating things that remind me of maps. Yeah, so this just gives me a, a background and then I can kind of build on top of it. But again, instead of using the paint, I'm gonna go ahead and turn to my water soluble pencil. Um, I've got a, got a blue right here that's on top. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna go ahead and I think I'm just gonna scribble this down. So I'm not pressing super hard because I don't want it to be too dark, but I'm, I'm just not, I'm not scribbling, scribble scrabble as little kids might say, but I'm, I'm just kind of doing some, uh, some scribbly kind of lines, just trying to fill up some of the space, but I'm not covering the entire surface. So I can go ahead and put that away. And I think what I want to do is I want to use some paint. And so one of the nice things with this water soluble pencil is that you can combine it with some paint. So I want to pick a color that's going to contrast this. If I just do blue, blue plus blue equals blue. That's not super exciting. But if I take something like this yellowish, uh, this greenish yellow over here, and it starts to mix with the blue, it's going to create green. Now, what I do is every time I go to get more paint, I rinse out my brush. So my water cup is over here, out of the way. Okay. All right, I think that's kind of enough yellow. So I'm just gonna paint this in. Spreading that around. I don't want this to be like a solid green, like the same green all over. So I want to have some areas that are a little bit more blue, some that are a little bit more yellow. And I want to leave some of those, those lines, some of those scribble marks. And, uh, and that way it creates some interesting texture. So I've got a, a nice background going. And like I, I normally do, I'm going to dry this uh, quickly with a hair dryer. So I apologize for the noise, but it does silence after a, a moment or two. And so, yeah, this paper curls, but if I turn it over on the back, hit it with a hair dryer, it'll flatten out a little bit. Okay. All right. So I've got that going. Um, now I want to do some collage. I like to use what I call generic collage. And so over here, I've got a little stack. I'm going to pull over. I've got all these little bits and pieces of old book pages. So this, this was just an old paperback that started falling apart. And I just love how the paper has started to uh, kind of yellow and turn a little bit brown. And um, just, I really like that. So 
I want to use this, but what I want to do is instead of cutting it, I'm going to go ahead and tear it. I just want to have some randomly torn pieces. Last time I, I worked a lot with more kind of geometric uh, shapes and lines. And then I think today I want to work a little bit more with some uh, random pieces. So the, the torn pieces are definitely good for that. Okay, so I've got some, some uh, tore up. Let me go ahead and get rid of that. And I'll pull in my glue paper. And I'm not going to cover the whole thing because I don't want to get rid of that background that I've made. But um, I like the texture of the text. So it's to me, it's not important with this text right here that I can read it. Um, and so I'm just going to kind of glue these in. I'm going to let them stick off the edge a little bit. And I'm just I'm doing this quickly and uh, not given it a lot of thought. It's more kind of an intuitive process. So just kind of sticking these down, maybe having them linked. Um, if I need to, I can always rip off a little piece. And again, this pad of paper that I have here is my, my glue book and it just really keeps my surfaces clean and uh, allows me to spread glue all over the back of the collage pieces. So one of the things that I am trying to do is I'm trying to get it to kind of touch all four sides. But instead of coming straight up here, I'm going to have this one maybe come out off center a little bit. That just makes it a little bit more interesting. Okay. And I feel like I want to have one more piece up there. And again, I really allow it to kind of stick out. Um, now that I like how that, you know, it's kind of subtle. I like the texture of it. Um, it's not a pure white paper. That paper has a bit of color to it. And um, I don't know, I just kind of like the way it adds texture and, you know, it has words, but we don't really take time to read the words. All right. So that's good. I'm going to let this dry a little bit and then I'll come back and trim the sides. Just kind of thinking what I want to do next. I think I'm going to grab one of my pens. And I think I'm just going to draw some more lines. kind of keeping everything a little bit more loose and a little bit more organic today. But interestingly is that I, I've used a similar water or a color scheme, a similar color scheme that I did last time. All right. Um, now, even though I use glue stick, glue stick is kind of low moisture. It's, it still has moisture in it. And so if I were to do something with this collage now, if I paint it over it, it could peel up a little bit. So I'm going to hit it with the hair dryer, and that's just going to help that glue dry and really keep those pieces glued down. And then hit it on the back so flat out a little bit. Okay, so I, what I'm thinking is I want to I want to do something on top of this. Um, maybe I will do. Last time I was using like squares and rectangles. 
I think today I want to use um, circles. Just trying to think. Um, I wanted to go off. I always think about the edges of my work of art. And so if I want to do circles, maybe I'll do a half a circle here. And I, I'm just being kind of quick with it, not worrying about making perfect circles. And this is just one of my favorite techniques to shade into the background. And then it kind of creates this almost like a window effect inside of the shape. And then this bottom circle is going to go off the edge. Okay, because I'm using a circle, um, I'm going to use a smaller rounded brush that'll allow me to kind of get up to the edge a little bit easier. I'm just using plain water this time. And because I pressed pretty hard with the pencil, that blue is actually going to spread pretty far. I really like this square format, but of course, you know, your artwork, you can make it any size that you want, any shape that you want. Sometimes folks like to use long skinny rectangles. Um, and I'm using this mixed media paper because I can draw on it, I can paint on it, I can collage on it, and it's a smooth surface, but it really withstands the, the buildup of, of all these different materials. Okay, so I've got that, but of course I need to dry it. So I've got my handy dandy hair dryer. thing with the small paper is that it wants to blow away whenever you use the hair dryer. So now that I've dried this, I want to go ahead and trim off these little bits. Okay. So I think I want to have kind of repeat some of these circles, but I want to do it a different way. I'm going to pull out a material, well, not really a material. I, I use it as a stencil. So this is a, it's a piece of plastic. Um, it's, it's sequin waste. So it's what they, you know, they punch sequins out of it. And uh, I've heard it called punchinella or punchinella. Um, and you used to be able to find it pretty easily. Now, Watercolor paint and, and plastic stencils just don't seem like they'd go well together. And they don't. Um, the problem is that the water wants to run and bleed underneath the plastic. But I really like that. I like when that happens. Okay, so I just painted some over. I didn't want to go too dark with it. And so I end up with some circles, but even like down here where it all bled, I kind of like how, how you could still see the circles. It's the outside that's a little bit darker. So let me hit this with my hair dryer. I think, I think that's 
that's working out pretty well. All right, so getting some layers on there. Um, before I go any further, I'm gonna grab my a black pen. I just kind of want to introduce some of the, the dark value. And I'm going to echo some of those lines that I drew earlier. And so I can still see some of the graphite lines. So I don't want to copy them exactly. But again, this notion of, of roads or paths, or even kind of like rivers and waterways. But the interesting thing is you can do any kind of line that you want. You know, if you really like straight lines, use straight lines. If you like jagged lines, use jagged lines. If you like really curvy, swirly, squiggly, wiggly lines, use those kind of lines. But what I'm trying to do is I try to spread it out so that I'm just, I'm not filling up the whole space, but I have a, I have a variety of spaces. So I have some spaces that are kind of small, some that are a little bit bigger, you know, just, just a variety of lines. And that's just builds up a nice background. And so what I want to do now is I'm thinking I want to have some kind of magazine image on there. And so I pulled out some magazine images that I had. Um, I really like these smaller uh, portraits, photos that I got um, that I found in a magazine. That could be really interesting. Maybe one of those gets in there. But the thing is, though, these are rectangles and squares. Well, I guess more rectangles. And if I cut out one of those and I just plop it down, then I'm going to have that rectangle. And it's going to be like, like this is a fancy frame for that little thing. So I'm thinking, I really like this picture. Um, and I just thought it might be really interesting. Actually, in the in the magazine, it goes this way, but I kind of like it this way. Like there's a lot of wind blowing, um, but of course this is big. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out my cutting mat and my craft knife. I could do this with scissors if I wanted to, um, and I'm going to try to basically cut her out. And so it's like I'm, I'm cutting right on the edge so that it's just more like her silhouette. And I like to turn it so I'm cutting, coming at it from different angles. And this is a thin magazine, so this knife should should not have any problems cutting through it. If I do, I can always change the blade. Now I don't want to cut out every every little hair there. I'm just kind of looking for like the clumps, the, the big pieces of hair. I don't even know if I'll use all of this. By cutting out the, the person, kind of doing the silhouette, I can really make them part of the artwork because the background is gonna show. You know, so like if I take this now, you know, and she's, She's too big to fit, and so her hand's not going to be on there, but I don't think that's going to be important. Um, but I'll cut her out, and then I'll play around with, with how I place it on there. 
that starts to give me an idea. And so since her hand's not gonna be on there, I'm not even gonna worry about trying to cut out around the fingers. But just trying to see exactly where I'm gonna want. I think something like that. So there's a whole bunch down here, but I'm gonna cut out and create a negative space down here. There's like these feathers and such there, but I don't, it's not totally necessary that I can see all those feathers. Kind of like the how dynamic that is. Kind of, kind of wish that her hand would fit. But see, I, I like having a little bit of that hair in there. So, I think something like that. Now I don't know where the edges are. So what I like to do, if I hold this down, if I just rub on the edge with my finger, and then I get a little line that I can see and I can trim this down. And just trim it a little bit bigger than I think I'm gonna need it. So again, I just kind of pressed on the hand and that gave me some marks. Okay. All right, so let's get some of this out of the way. All right, this has a lot of sticky glue, so I'll change the page. All right, I'm gonna be very careful with the arm because sometimes I can tear or bend or fold long skinny pieces. So just gonna to try to cover all that. So even though the glue stick is, is low moisture, the paper still curls up a lot. Okay. So I left a little extra. And then that way I can fit it on and I can always trim off where things stick out. So this just, this it creates a really dynamic composition. Um, let me go ahead and trim off some of this. If I had a bigger piece of paper, it would not be so dynamic. Now I could have gotten her hand in there too,
but I don't know. There's something about this that I really like. And it just really, I mean, it breaks up that space. So I got the background. I got like two big pieces of the background showing. She takes up a lot of space in, in a very dynamic way. I really, really like that. So, okay, um, almost done. There's one last thing that I want to do because here's the problem. Um, she's kind of floating on top of everything, you know, and, and it, it's an interesting composition, but if I want to kind of push her down inside, I'm going to grab, I have another piece of that punchinella if I can find it. That's actually a bigger one. So it has bigger holes. And this time I'm going to use a darker blue. And what I'm going to do is I want, I'm going to trace some of these circles with my pen. Not every single one, but just a couple, or not a couple, but a few. And I'm going to let it go over top of the magazine. Now I'm not going to cover her completely, oops, but this will help sort of push her into the surface a little bit more. And do some over here. You might not be able to see all the little circles that I drew on there, but you know, here in the arm, you can see how those little circles then kind of pop out. But because they're also in the background, really helps just sort of push her in to the surface a little bit more. So anyway, I think this is getting close to being finished. So let me go ahead and grab a black pen. Um, I think there's just enough space here. I can kind of squeeze my name in. Okay. So there's that one. All right, so again, just very quickly, you know, about 30 minutes and I was able to make this this tiny piece, but it's very complex. Um, some nice layers in there. And um, because of the small size, it really allowed me to do that dynamic composition. So um, that's something to play with whenever you're you're making your art is, is the size of your paper, the size of the images. Um, sometimes you can scan images and, and print them out bigger or smaller. Um, so in, can, you can really see how they, uh, the size can really affect the the, the piece um, and and how it can be really changed drastically and, and dynamically. So anyway, I hope that you enjoyed that. Um, and I hope that you can continue joining me for different episodes. So um, thank you so much for joining me. I'll be back next week, same, same time, same place. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. So thank you so much. And as always, happy creating.